Okay, so another example here of a trigonometric substitution involving a rational power. Um, so here we have the integral of 1 over 9x squared minus 25 to the 3 halves power. I'm going to do uh, a few steps here. I'm going to rewrite the 9x squared as 3x squared. Again, I didn't do the numerical part in the other examples, but we can write the 25 as 5 squared. All of that would go under the square root, and then that would be cubed. Um, so again, you know, the square root's to the 1 half power. Well, we would have it to the 1 half cubed, which would give us to our 3 halves power, just like our first example. Again, the only thing I'm doing, kind of, and the reason I'm doing this, before our uh, trig substitutions, the examples, a lot of them, there was never a coefficient in front of the, uh, the variable part, the x part. So in this case, uh, we do have a, uh, an extra little bit. So normally when we had a variable squared minus a number squared, that's when we use uh, secant. In this case, we're going to, instead of just having x equals 5 secant theta, we're going to have 3x equals 5 secant theta. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. And then it says our dx. Well, uh, when we take the derivative of secant, we'll get secant theta times tangent theta. Let's tack on our d theta. And now I'm just going to uh, plug all this stuff in. So let's see, our 3x squared, instead of 3x, we're going to plug in 5 secant theta. So we would have 25 secant squared theta uh, minus 25. Again, all of that's being cubed, so let's not forget about that. And then our dx will have 5 thirds. Um, it looks like we'll have secant of theta times tangent of theta, d theta left over. So let's just keep uh, just factoring and using our trig identity to simplify. So we have secant theta, tangent theta. Um, in the denominator, we would have the square root. We could make this just 25. And then secant squared theta minus 1. Again, all of that being cubed, d theta. So we have 5 thirds uh, secant theta times tangent theta. Well, our 25 could come out as a 5. Our secant squared theta minus 1, we could replace that with uh, tangent squared theta. But when we take the square root of it, well, we're just left with tangent of theta. But again, all of this is being cubed. So let's see, we have 5 thirds times secant theta, tangent theta. We would have 5 cubed, and then tangent uh, cubed theta, d theta. So hopefully this will clean up rather nicely. Um, so there's our 5 thirds. We could pull out the 1 over 5 cubed. Um, we would have secant theta. But let's see, I guess when we reduce uh, tangent theta over tangent cubed, we'll just be tangent squared theta d theta. So now we get to integrate this lovely thing. Um, you know, secant theta over tangent theta. So the first thing I think about is trig substitution, or uh, u substitutions. Um, but I'm not sure how that's going to work. Let's do this part real quick. So 5 over 5 cubed, that would leave us with uh, 3 times 5 squared in the denominator. Um, I think what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to rewrite it. So uh, secant, well, that's just 1 over cosine theta. Uh, tangent squared, that's going to be sine squared theta over cosine squared theta, d theta. So let's see, 5 squared is 25 times 3. That'll give us 1 over 75. So we've got 1 over cosine theta. It looks like, I guess, if we flip and multiply, we would have cosine squared theta over sine squared theta, d theta. And this, to me, is starting to look better because we would have a cosine theta left over in the numerator um, and just sine squared left over in the denominator. Um, let's see. Is, let's see. So cosine over sine, that's cotangent. Um, so I'm thinking about breaking this up. Two different things. I, I, I definitely see a u substitution works. If we let u equal sine theta, du is going to be cosine theta. So I know I can integrate this using a u sub. If we rewrite this as cosine theta over sine theta uh, times 1 over sine theta, I'm just kind of checking to see what we get. 
So cosine over sine would be cotangent. One over sine is cosecant theta. Um, so I think we know a nice little antiderivative immediately for this, right? So the derivative of secant is secant tangent. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So that's almost what we need. Um, so let's see. So again, we could break this up as cosine over sine times 1 over sine. So I'm going to write this as cosecant theta times cotangent theta d theta. Let's see. So we've got 1 over 75. So the antiderivative of cosecant theta, cotangent theta, will be negative cosecant theta uh, plus c. So one more thing. We'll have to do our right triangle. And let's see, our very original substitution, where'd you go? Back a little ways. So our original substitution was 3x equals 5 secant theta. So I'm just going to rewrite that as 3x over 5 equals secant of theta. Okay, so I'm going to use my, uh, set up my right triangle based on this. So there's my angle uh, theta, so let's see. Secant, again, is 1 over cosine. Uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this will be hypotenuse over adjacent. So the hypotenuse has length uh, 3x. The adjacent is length 5. If we do uh, Pythagorean theorem, we'll get uh, 3x quantity squared, which will give us 9x squared. We'll have to subtract away the, uh, the 5 squared, or 25. And then we'll take the square root of that to get our missing side. So the last thing we need to do here is just read off cosecant of theta. Again, cosecant is 1 over sine, and sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. So cosecant is the hypotenuse um, over the opposite. So let's see, the hypotenuse is 3x. Uh, the opposite side would be the square root of 9x squared minus 25 plus C, and that is now our antiderivative.